things between screens, it'll be be great to have that archived in perpetuity. Excellent. You're welcome. Be cursing at my screen. You're welcome. All right. So we're talking about, about reference management. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're trying to write a document and you're opening up a folder and you're looking at PDF and you're like, okay, I want to cite this. And so you're putting in parentheses, the author and the last name, then you're going down to the end and the references and you're like typing out the whole reference by hand, right? That is an extraordinary waste of your time because there is software that will do this all for you. And in the context of, of, of working in a team, working with others, this software will, will further make your life so much easier. It, I, it is, it is, it, 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 it gives me warm, fuzzy feelings in my heart every time I need to insert a, a reference section in a certain format, and I can literally do it at the click of a button. Um, and so there's there are multiple platforms, multiple software platforms that can do this. Um, I use work in one called Mendeley. I'm going to give you a super quick Mendeley tutorial. Dr. A works in one called EndNote. He's going to give you a super quick EndNote tutorial. We don't care which one you use. There's pros and cons to both. But as a team, your team is going to need to pick one because you're going to use that to manage all of your shared papers and eventually your shared team thesis and, um, and team bibliography. Um, and so don't, don't go off into the wilderness of the internet and download things yet. Just uh, I'm going to try to do this in a little bit of a demonstration. Um, and so I'm going to stop sharing for just a moment. And uh, I'm going to pull up another screen. And all of these things may either make you dizzy or irritated or both. Um, So now let's just see if I can share my screen again, and we're just going to share my other screen. So now, can you guys all, I'll see Mendeley desktop, and it, it probably looks incredibly small on, on your screens. But again, you know, I just want to just walk you through this a little bit in general. So this is Mendeley. Um, it is has a variety of sort of features that will be more obvious if you start small and they get confusing when you jump into the middle like I did with lots of groups and, and folders and lots of references. Um, but it's basically what you might think of in terms of like a folder structure on your desktop, right? So here's all your, all your papers. Um, but it does a few things that are really handy. So for example, um, you can create a group. So we can create an ESRM capstone group. Um, and we can invite people to it. I'll invite oh, thanks, um, Dr. Dude. A, you. Um, and the nice thing about this group is that once this group appears over here in your groups, um, you can start adding papers to the group. And once you've installed this and your colleagues have installed this, if we search in here and we search for a paper on Coastal access equity. It's a thing that I think is interesting. It looks a little funny. I don't know what's happening on my screen, but you can grab this folder and you can drop it into this shared group. It's working great so far. <laughs> Seamless. Seamless. So you need to believe me when I tell you. I'm so glad you're recording this, John. I'm feeling great you're about welcome. this so far. You're welcome. We're going to add this to the group. Oh, for fuck's sake. There it is. OK, that took a minute. So now this shared paper is in our shared group. And so as a team, you start to pull all of your papers from your individual accounts into the shared account. And now your life is going to start to become much simpler from a shared paper management perspective. Um, I want to quickly show you a few other things that this will let you do. And so let me just see if this works. Um, so can you all see this? Yeah, window now? Uh, Google, it says Google right now. Yeah. Okay, cool. You don't need all my bookmarks. So. Um, 
So let's just say we're searching for a paper on coastal access equity in California. And you find a PDF of this paper, you want to download it. You grab the PDF, you download it into your shared folder, or rather onto your desktop. And it already, of course, it already exists, it's already there. Um, Cause I've already downloaded it. This is just the example that's fresh. Now when you go to Mendeley and you go to add that folder, that paper, you're like adding a file. So now here it's popping up with the PDF. And what's amazing about Mendeley is that it will add all of this information for you just using sort of a smart, intelligent review of different uh, document headers and metadata. Um, if that doesn't happen immediately, the other thing you can do is search by the DOI, right, the digital object identifier, and you just plug that in and look it up, and it'll populate all of this for you. And as opposed to entering all of that information, title, authors, journal, volume, your pages, as opposed to entering all that by hand into every paper you write, you enter it once in here, and then it'll automatically populate into any papers you need anytime you need it. Um, and so let me show you what that- you want one, one quick second, Dan? Also, yeah. I just, I'll just flag, if you guys could look there. Oh, okay, doesn't matter. Um, oh, sorry. You can see there's attachments as well. It's not just it's not just information, right? Can you guys see down there? There's a PowerPoint or something, or PDF, excuse me, PDF. So you can embed material there. That could be a map. That could be a JPEG, that could be a PDF, that could be whatever the, the research item uh, that you want is. So this is also a way to organize your, your physical files as well, not just the information and the descriptors, not just the metadata, but the actual things themselves. Sorry. Um, and you can also use it to, for example, annotate your papers directly into them. You can highlight, you can add notes. Um, so here's where this gets really handy. Um, so let's say that now um, I am writing my capstone paper and I want to cite something that's very relevant to, you're all looking so I can't type, to coastal access equity. Um, all I do, all you do is install the plugin and hit Alt plus M. Uh, and I get this little window and I already did this before to make sure it actually worked. And so I'm, I'm, I'm already searching within my capstone group. I could select other groups and you search for this, this paper. Why isn't it showing up? Oh, darn it. Okay. Thinking. Great, great demonstration. No, so it's smooth. It, 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 sometimes, sometimes, it, sometimes it takes a hiccup, sometimes it takes a bit, but it, it, it works really well. All right, well, I'm not gonna search in that folder. I don't know what that one's going in. So I'll just search in my library. So there you search. Hit enter, and so there it is, right there. And if we want to add a reference section, you can go up to your references. Here's what the Mendeley um, plugin looks like in Word, and you can just sort of bibliography, just like that. And you might wonder what what style. Maybe you want to do uh, APA. Click a button, and it changes your formatting of your citations and your bibliography. So you never again, ever again, ever will have to format within your bibliography. Um, there's a question in the chat. Oh. Uh, Could you do it on Google Docs? So that's the thing. You cannot. As of yet, Google Docs and Mendeley aren't, aren't cross-synced. Um, you can, in Google Docs, you can edit Microsoft Word documents keeping them as docx files, but it's hard to edit them simultaneously um, without making having version issues. And what's worse, 
um, what happens, what this program is doing, what the Mendeley program is doing when it embeds a citation is it's embedding some macro code into the Word document that tells Word what information to look for where and to plug in there. And if you pull the document from sort of Microsoft Word into Google Docs and back, sometimes those macros get screwed up and then you have to reinsert all your citations over again. Um, so Dr. A mentioned that I, I was all excited. I, I was like, Sean, I found the Journal of Ecology. I know you like this Journal of Ecology formatting style. So I wanted to make sure that you know, the students would be able to find Journal of Ecology. So I went and I found and I added it. He said, oh, that's not the right Journal of Ecology. Um, it's Ecology. Journal of Ecology is a British journal. So we're looking, just looking for ecology or ecological applications or ecological monographs are all the same family of, of styles. I also have one more question. So I do have Word, but does it work on Mac? Yes. So this okay. Mendeley works across platforms. Cool, cool. Um, same idea on both ones. You just do a plugin and, and you just want to, before you start to use it, you just want to, you know, to close your programs and do that plugin installation, free plugin. Okay. And then, and then do it. So when you install Mendeley on your desktop, um, it will say, do you also want to install the Microsoft Word program and the correct plugin? And the correct answer is yes. Mendeley also works on Android and Mac. So here I'm going to install the ecology. It's installed, done, nice. Over here, references. This might not go right away. There it is, ecology, use this style, done. Boom, formatted for ecology. Are they? Doesn't necessarily look like Sean's too, but in, in principle, this is how it works. And it it will save, it will, it will, it will add, it will, it will add years to your lives. Um, that's how great it is. Um, so before we shift gears and Dr. A takes the reins to talk about EndNote, which is another program that can do the same thing, um, I just wanna talk about a couple things really quickly in Microsoft Word that will likewise um, make your lives much, much, much easier. Um, and so those are, there's a couple of things. I wanna talk about headings, I wanna talk about captions, and I wanna talk about cross references. So just three things really easily that will make working in a big shared complicated document much easier for you. Um, so the first thing you'll start noticing is when you start typing um, and you're working in Microsoft Word, you've got this option for things called styles and your general normal text and you just start typing is in style normal. That's fine, you can leave it as normal. And when you add a section heading, you can go into the styles and you can give it a heading label. So heading one is like your top level heading. Heading two is the next sub level before that and so on. And so why this is wonderful is as you start to insert these headings in your document, there's a couple things that'll make life easier. So one, the headings make it easier to navigate uh, inside um, a big complicated paper. So I'm looking for the Word navigation pane, all right? So once you have all your headings in, your headings will show up in your navigation pane. So it makes it nice and easy to move around. Um, but the other reason it's really great is when you want to change the heading, say you don't want it to be blue because you don't want it to be blue. Say you want it to be bold and black. Now all I have to do is update heading one to match the selection and it'll automatically change every heading in your document. So this too will make life easier. Um, and now let's say you wanna add an image. So use, use headings to organize your headings. If you're gonna have a heading, like a header, like an outline, like it's gonna say introduction or methods, actually tell Microsoft Word, and this works in Google Docs too, but tell it that that's the format that you're assigning it 
and it'll make your life easier. So say you want to add an image. This is just an image of the business cards that we posted for you last term. I had it handy. So you guys are going to be adding tables, charts, figures, maps, all these things in your paper. You're going to put them in and you're going to go like this. Figure one, sample cards. These are samples of cards, right? Everybody loves a good sample card. So the problem with this is that now someone else is working on the next page down on your team and they're going to insert a figure or a caption and they're going to call theirs figure one because they don't know that you've already inserted one up here and everything's going to get really confusing, especially if you've got paragraphs of text in which you refer to C figure one, right? And so what you want to do is do two things. One, you're going to caption this image with a caption that you have Microsoft Word generate to you, generate for you. Uh, so we can just get rid of that. So you're gonna go up here to uh, references, and you're gonna go to captions and you're gonna insert a caption. So you're gonna select whatever it is, whether it's a table or a figure or a map, you're gonna insert a caption. You're gonna tell it, is it a figure, is it a table? You're gonna tell it whether you want that caption label above it or below it. You're going to enter your caption text. And there it is. And it's automatically assigned that caption a style. And you can change that if you don't want it to be blue and you don't want it to be blue. And so now the reason that this gets super handy. And so now when you're referring to figure one, you're just going to say C and you're going to go up here to um, insert a cross-reference. So I'll give you detailed notes on this, but insert a cross-reference. And now you can insert a cross-reference to, for example, a figure. And you want it to refer to, no, not an end note, figure. You don't, you just want the label and the number. And you insert, and automatically it says figure one right there. So now if you enter another figure and you add a new caption and this becomes figure two, this will update automatically. And this too will make your life so easy. Um, so I just wanted to highlight those really quick, like large document management tools for you. I still work with colleagues, some in this department who haven't discovered these little Microsoft Word tricks. And this, these will save you hours and hours of headache. Um, and so I'll, I'll make a document and I'll share those tools with you with just some basic instructions. But I, I strongly encourage you, as you start to move ahead this semester, start little, start early using these tools so that by the time you get to the end of this semester and you're all working on a 40 page thesis that has a dozen charts and figures on it and all sorts of headings, uh, that you can have this be done for you automatically instead of very tediously by hand. Dr. A, chime in, go ahead. Yeah, so I'll say, so I'll say that um, uh, things have gotten a lot better. So in my mm -hmm. dissertation, I wasted a lot of time because these, these tools weren't yet optimized back in the dark ages. And it- Yeah, and when he, he was chipping it into ta stone yeah, tablets, that's- like, damn, what's up? Um, but so, uh, but my, my one suggestion though is, um, and what I've noticed, um, uh, so headers, organization, really, really helpful. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the finessing of the labels until later on down the line. What's, what's important is that we have a, a section that's this and that this, this, this section is, is nested underneath that section. That's really what's important. So you guys can um, get it all together and, 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 and polish it up towards the end. Another one that I've just found uh, is, um, a lot of times it's, it's, it can sometimes get in the way of some of our editing. If we have a lot of images or a lot of figures embedded um, uh, just you know, throughout. And so usually when we're writing a, a manuscript, a draft, um, we put the figures at the end. So definitely what Dr. Ryan is saying is correct. So here's this figure, I'm gonna say that it's called figure one or, or, or it's a figure and then, and then the, the, the numerical ordering will, will, will come. 
but I'm going to put those at the bottom. That way I can focus on the text, focus on the writing, focus on the reading and making sure that that helps. And then um, later on, if I want to merge it, we can do that. Similarly, once a semester, once a capstone or two, there's, there's someone that feels that they want to write their um, capstone in uh, sort of like how we would read it maybe in a newspaper in, in columns as opposed to sort of, you know, rectangular chunks of, of um, text. And uh, that, you know, that, that's a formatting choice. Again, another thing to leave to the end. If you want to do that, great. But it's, it's usually easiest to have nice blocks of text when we're revising, uh, trying to work on our, on our articulation of ideas and stuff. It's usually nice to have that as a, as a clean block of text. Um, and then, yeah, so oh, yeah. I was going to say, so in terms of, Dr. and I were chatting about this um, while you were broken out. Um, in terms of my workflow, when I'm working on a manuscript with colleagues in different places, we usually keep it as a Google document as long as possible because it makes it makes collaboration across sort of time zones and continents so much easier. And if you need to drop a citation, instead of dropping the citation, I'll just I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm writing. And I'll just be like, okay, I need to cite something in parentheses. Cite that Coastal Access paper that those guys published in, in 2015. Close parentheses. Keep writing, 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 writing. And, and that's how the citations look until pretty close to like the end. Like once all the ideas are in place, all right? Once, once most of the writing is done, most of the thinking is done, then we pull it into Microsoft Word and someone does the, the, the tedious, but not nearly as tedious as it could be without a citation management software that does the job of going through and replacing like what I just wrote with the actual citation from from our, our shared group and the citation manager. So that'll take you know 20 minutes to go through 10 pages or 12 pages, few tens of thousands of words of text. And now everything's ready to go on Word. So keep it in Google Docs as long as you can, just makes your life simple. Eventually you're gonna need to move it into Microsoft Word. Um, you wanna talk about EndNote, Dr. A? Yeah, so um, so a lot of the stuff I, I can go through very fast. A lot of the stuff is, is very similar. Um, so again, uh, what these tools are, are databases, right? And so there's a standard, I'm gonna sneeze in a second. I'm gonna sneeze, hold on, let me uh, share. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Let me share my screen, I'm not gonna sneeze now. Huh. Um, oh, okay, yeah, sorry, I'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll put these also everywhere, uh, some other places, but um, uh, so uh, the tool that Dr. Ryan, it doesn't matter which tool you use, right? And th there's other tools in these tool, in these two that we are talking about the key is just that you use one. And uh, while you guys are, of course, welcome to, to pick the one that you like, we, um, given that we're doing a collaborative document, your group is, is obviously deciding on which one of these you, your group will be using and therefore your stuff will reside in. But do realize that um, the information is key. The tool, we should be agnostic on the tool. So if, if I'm working in EndNote, but, every, but my group decides they wanna use uh, Mendeley, um, you can you can export my library and completely import it into that tool and vice versa. So these things all talk to each other, right? They might not talk directly, but with a simple two or three steps, you can bring all of that content or the vast majority of that content into the other tools. So um, that should not be a barrier to you utilizing um, these things. And, and we'd encourage you guys to try these out. Maybe one of them works better for one or the other. Okay, uh, EndNote. Uh, so I just put a couple links in here. So EndNote is uh, is a, a the big sort of um, traditional program that that people use. Um, they're what most of my it's what most of my collaborators use, but but it doesn't matter. Um, uh, it is a paid program though, which is the difference. So you guys as students, you can get it for one hundred and thirty nine dollars or something like that, one hundred and thirteen some, somewhere in, in that order of magnitude. Um, but there's also, <clears throat> which is a standalone program that would live on your PC, live on your Mac or, or wherever it is. Um, there's also a web-based version. And as, as students, uh, registered students of CSUCI, you guys all have access to the web version, which is known as EndNote Web. And so that first link I sent you is, or that's in the chat, is just uh, how to do it. So the very first time you just have to register, it's a tool on the library, on our uh, Broom Library website. And so you just follow that, that first document to go in and register. Once you register, then all you need to do is to, um, 
uh, so this is my standalone, is, is to go online and, and log on. And this is what that looks like. And so this is EndNote. This is, this, is the, this is the program EndNote, but this flavor is the web-based version of EndNote. So we call this EndNote Web. And just like Dr. Reinemann showed, it's, it's the same idea, right? It's this big list of stuff. And just like his, things are also completely configurable. So while when we get something out of, a, out of the library or the, the, the search engine or whatever, it has these things already populated, uh, there's little codes embedded for the title and the keywords and the abstract, et cetera. Uh, when you, uh, uh, but realize also these things are all configurable. And so if you wanted to have your own terms, you don't, you're, you aren't strictly relegated to what comes out of the, the search engine or the journal thing, you can add things in. So you could say a uh, great for my methods section or, or something that says methods or something that has my name, if we're going to merge all of our stuff together. So I remember that this is the one that I found. Or, or whatever, right? Or, and so, so this is a database, even though there are the default fields, you are welcome to add or configure those fields uh, as you see fit. The default, whenever we go to search for something, um, for example, so here's, I just went, I, I ju jumped on something while we were talking and I, I just searched this, this particular uh, tool, in this case is on JSTOR, all the different databases um, or, or many of the different databases will look slightly different when you're hunting references or what have you. But something like this, you'll get to the bottom or, or you'll click a button to export that or to save the citation. And there'll be something of this nature. RefWorks, EasyBib, RIS. RIS is the generic uh, 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 reference indicator system, I think, or reference information system or whatever the name of the file is. And this is the thing that most of these more sophisticated programs use. But again, you could use any of them. This comes out as a file. If we look at this file, it looks like this. And uh, if, we, well, we can't see if we open it, but, but it's, it's just a bunch of text, right? So then we can import this, this file or this folder of files and suck those, those sources up. In addition, um, in addition, okay, so here we go. So this is our EndNote, this is the EndNote web. Just like Dr. Uh, Reinemann mentioned that he has a plugin that he ran on Word to be able to utilize the tool from within Word, same thing here. So I would just go over here to down, oops, what happened? Uh, what? It doesn't like me anymore. Uh, let's try this one. Um, hmm, it just left. It's because we're watching. That's because we're watching. Um, okay, doesn't matter. So anyway, so so we just go to downloads, and we would we could download that plugin and run it. And just like uh, just like uh, we were talking before, in this case here, in, so we're looking at my Word now, my my Word desktop. Um, now I have an EndNote. Uh, in my case, EndNote X. It's, there, there's a newer version that just came out, but but it's the same idea, right? So just like Dr. Reinemann mentioned, you're going to go to wherever you want, hover the cursor there go to my uh, um, EndNote bibliography and uh, pick whichever one it is and say insert and it'll, it'll show up uh, in there. And then we can, can have it uh, formatted uh, live um, as we go. Um, uh, so right now, so this is, this is my real one right here, okay? So here, just like uh, we were talking about with the cross references and, um, and those other fields, uh, this document right here is one of the ones that I started generating, adding in the references. So I don't want science, right? I want to do ecology. So I do that and everything, you know, live updates, just like this, you know, these, these programs work essentially identically. Um, but when I, but as, as Dr. Ryan was mentioning right here, quickly, when I hover my cursor or I, I go to touch it, it's just, it's just text. Yeah. But when I go to this part where I've embedded the information, uh, you'll see it's gray and the same thing over here, it's gray. Um, so at that final stage, when you're, when you're trying to save this to send to maybe a partner or your, your, your roommate to read it or something of that nature, um, I believe there's, there's a similar thing with uh, Mendeley, uh, but I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say, okay, I, I don't want to just send this to someone because it, it might, they might not be able to um, manipulate or whatever. Yeah. Anthony, Anthony had a question. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> real quick, uh, what are the advantages of uh, EndNote over Mendeley? Um, 
in order, you know, why, why would I want to spend uh, that amount of money? Uh, is Mendeley paid or, or is it free? Well, I'll, I'll say it quickly. So Mendeley is, is free and you don't have to be a student to use it. And so if you choose to use it, I would say use, set up your account with your professional non-CI email address. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible to migrate and combine libraries and accounts after the fact, but I'll just create an account with your, the professional email address that you created like for your business cards. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have access to that account free forever. Got it. That, that sounds pretty sweet. Is there, is there a reason why you went with EndNote, Dr. Anderson? Uh, because that, well, firstly, that, first. tool, that tool didn't exist when I started doing this when I was, oh, in okay, that, that. but, but also I find, I find it's a little more slick on certain things. Um, but, but, you know, if I hadn't started using this 20 years ago, I, you know, may, maybe I would be using, you know, Zotero yeah. or Mendeley or something. And it, I mean, it comes a little bit from our personal histories, right? So at Mendeley started as, as very much like sort of a, like a, a ground up, like a bunch of researchers were like, there has got to be a better way to do this that's free and easy. Like how hard could it be? And they built Mendeley. And Mendeley was later published by, um, I mean, public, it was purchased by one of the large publishing, like journal publishing companies. And so I don't, I don't love that about it, but that doesn't ever really weigh in. Um, and occasionally if you're, if, you're, if you're doing literature search and you end up searching that publishers journals it's it's it, it sinks them more easily into Mendeley but otherwise I, I use it because it was free and when I was a grad student I couldn't afford EndNote. The other thing the other thing about uh, EndNote is it, it tends it, 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 again it, it doesn't matter it, it, you use whichever one you guys want but um, EndNote uh, has been better at um, it probably won't be super important to you guys but a lot of the articles that are important to me are things from like 1975 or something, right? Or 1985, right? And so all the stuff you guys are using, or, or not all the stuff, but a large fraction of the material you guys are using is newly generated. So it's native PDF, right? It's native, it, it, comes, it, it, it comes out with all the, the text correctly and stuff formatted. Um, we're, publishers are, are going through their old archives and trying to update that stuff, but it just takes time. EndNote has some tools that tend to be a little bit better at trying to to look at uh, optic uh, to look at a scan essentially of an old journal and and try to guess what it thinks the title and stuff are. So there's some things like that, but it's again for the vast majority of you guys, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter that much. Um, so Doctor, I'm gonna reclaim the screen. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll say one, I'll say one other thing though. Yeah. Uh, one Fine, thing final word on EndNote. Like, one thing I do like about EndNote is I work a lot offline. I don't I I don't tend to work on everything on the cloud all the time, connected all the time, diff in different places. And a lot of the places in the world where I've worked, there has not been internet access. EndNote lives on my computer, right? And so it it's the, it's there. Some of these other tools, which are great, tend to be more cloud based. And when you have an outage or a or or aren't on you know a T1 line or something, um, they just work a little you know slicker. I don't need to have that that interface all the time. So Mendeley can be fully synced to your desktop or not. Like you might have noticed when I was scrolling through my library of thousands of papers, almost none of them had a PDF associated, and that's because I've got a new computer. I don't have many PDFs on it, but it doesn't matter anymore because I've got them linked in my Mendeley cloud. Can I, can I show one thing before we finish up, Dan? I know you yeah. probably want to finish up. Uh, so just uh, let me jump back here. Um, oh, you need to take your screen back. I'm going to share it anymore. I'll, 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 I'll just describe it. It's on that video. So I, I made a video and you guys can see it. But just like Dan did on the EndNote web, I can also create a group. Uh, same exact process. Name it. And then I would, uh, the difference is one person has to start the group, right? So one person would start it and then invite other people. And then your entire group can be sharing that save library. And there's just a little drop down. When I go to insert the, when I go to insert the reference, uh, I would just say, don't use my, my giant library. You know, let's use this shared library. Um, and uh, sort of like Napster, but for journal articles, does that resonate with anyone that reference? Anyone? I think they're, they're, they're all too, they're, they're uh, too young to know what the hell that means. Um, so we'll, we'll drop Dr. A's references that he just mentioned his, his resources and videos um, into this and we'll post this for you 
um, on Canvas. 